I want to welcome everyone to the Hand of God ministry tonight. Are y'all ready to receive yes. what the Spirit is saying to us in these last days? Yes. Amen. We're going to continue in the book of Acts chapter 8. And we're going to pick up what's happening right now is the expansion and the explosion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to start in verse, in chapter 8. And we're going to start in uh, verse 14. And we're going to read until the Lord says we're full. Amen. Praise God. Are y'all ready to receive yes. the word tonight? Amen. Just a little backdrop from what we did last Wednesday. We know that the Jewish people, the apostles, and the church in Jerusalem has had that big revival added to the church. 3,000 plus people, the church has exploded in Jerusalem. And so what's happening now is the persecution in Jerusalem has intensified. And so now they're going beyond Jerusalem because God said, I got to shake them up because they're getting complacent in Jerusalem. I told them to go out into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature in Judea and Samaria and beyond. Is that what the word says? Amen. And so God is now making this happen for what the enemy meant for evil through the persecution. God is using it for his glory to expand the gospel Amen. into those regions that he wants the gospel reaching. So the first one he sends out is who? Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven that the 12 apostles laid their hands on for a food program. Amen. They were a part of the helps team. Amen. And now we got Philip ministering the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in Samaria. And there's been an explosion out in Samaria. Now, if you know the history of the relationship between the Jewish people and Samaria, the Samaritans, they were half Jews, the Samaritan people. Amen? Are you with me? Everybody with me? Yes. So the Jewish people hated the Samaritan people because they were not full-blooded Jewish people. Y'all remember that? I'm going to give you a little history, so I want you to hold your place there, and I want you to go with me to John chapter 3, and I want you to see something in the Gospels. This isn't even a part of my notes either. This is all Holy Ghost right here, and I want you to see something. Let's go in John chapter 4. And I want you to go down to verse 9. And when you got to say amen. 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 You are with me. Amen. In verse 9, I want you to see this. It says, The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with who? Samaritans. Samaritans. And where is Philip at? He's in Samaria ministering to the Samaritans who are half Jews. The gospel is for every creature. It does not matter what your background is. And so Jesus is communicating with this Samaritan woman, which the Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Amen? She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Now I want you to go to verse 21. Or let's go to verse uh, 20. Watch this. So tell me. This is the woman talking to Jesus. Why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worship? Verse 21. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter where you worship the Father, on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him. Why? Because salvation comes through the Jews. 
because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you with me? Verse 23. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is a spirit. And so those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Isn't that powerful? We cannot commune, saints, with the Father outside of the Holy Spirit. And so now Philip is in Samaria ministering the gospel and telling them now that you are included. And so the apostles are starting to wonder because they just got word what's happening in Samaria and the apostles are still wondering if the gospel, this new covenant, this new outpouring of the Spirit of God that has happened in the book of Acts chapter 2 in the upper room, is it really for those half Jews? We're not quite sure yet. So there's still some reservations in the apostles. And so now Philip, they've received word what's happening in the book of Acts with the ministry of Philip. So now I want to go back to Acts and I want to show you something. I did my study, amen? amen. Y'all are going to enjoy this. And we're going to get some, uh, some application for us and how this will help us in our walk, amen? amen? And how this affects the church today. So I want to start in verse 14. This is the arrival of the apostles after hearing what happened in Samaria. It says in verse 14, When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. What message did they receive? What message did Philip go and tell all of the Samaritans about the gospel of Jesus Christ? The message was the good news that they were now included. And he was sharing with them that what I talked to the woman at the well about, you're fixing to experience more of. Because it says in the previous verses that they got saved and they experienced healing and they experienced deliverance because the spirit had been regenerated and they had received a measure of the spirit of God, which is called the spirit of adoption. They have now been adopted into the family of God because of what Jesus Christ has done. It's all centered around what Jesus has done for us at the cross. Your whole life starts at the cross. Amen. Amen. And we must go through the cross, which is the bloodshed of Christ, so that our fellowship with the Father can be restored. Amen. That's why Jesus came. That's why everyone in the earth is running to and fro to everything so they can try to fill themselves up with something. And instead it leaves them more empty. We were not created for the things of this world. We're just passing through. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Jesus said, I have no head, nowhere to lay my head. He says, I don't, this is not my home. I'm just passing through. Because the disciples asked Jesus, where are you staying, Christ, so we, we can come with you? He said, I don't have no place to lay my head. And the same is for us. We don't get comfortable in the earth. We don't become attached to things in the earth because we're just passing through as foreigners on our way to heaven, shouting Amen. victory, hallelujah, Amen. and glory. So we have to remember those words. Watch this. It says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. Verse 15, as soon as they arrived, what did the apostles do? They prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. But I thought they already had received salvation. Now you have to understand there's something wonderful that's happening right now in Samaria. We had that great outpouring in the book of Acts chapter 2. And the disciples were baptized with the Spirit of God. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Amen. And, and here is a separate incident that's happening, a whole separate service that's dedicated to the new believers that are in God. Because it says these new believers 
had not yet received the spirit of the living God. But they received the measure. Because every one of us, when you understand the cross, when you understand why Jesus Christ came to the earth as a sacrifice for our sins, and the sins of the world were laid upon him. And he nailed our sin to the cross. And our sin debt was paid. And the wrath of God that was upon man has now been removed. Amen. Because of Jesus. Amen. We must receive that sacrifice that Christ did. Hallelujah. So when we receive Christ, we have a measure of the spirit. And that's the spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit witnesses to your spirit that you are truly saved. Man cannot tell you that you're saved. Only the spirit of the living God can say to your spirit and witness to you that you have salvation. Amen. Amen. And what are you saved from? You're saved from hell. You're saved from separation from God. And you're saved from the wrath that is to come upon the earth. Amen. That's good news. Yeah, yeah. Give him a shout of praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thank God every day I'm saved. Amen. Yeah. On my way to heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. So here it is. I want you to read in verse 15. The apostles arrive. They're discerning what's happening and what's happened. They pray for these new believers. I love the word there that it says new believers. That means they have salvation. To receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 16. For the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. For they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What does that say, Saint? That means there's a separate service that the apostles are doing just for these Samaritan that are in Samaria. That means the apostle Peter and John came down. And, and I got to laugh a little bit. I smiled when I heard John's name was in there. Y'all got to go and just really study the Gospels. If you go all the way back to the book of Luke, you remember when the disciples were walking with Jesus, going on their way to Jerusalem, they had to pass through the village of Samaria. Because I believe Jerusalem is down here, Samaria is up here, and then Judea is up here somewhere. I'm Bible Atlas. My wife is the Bible Atlas. So don't, 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 don't stone me if I'm wrong. I just know Jerusalem is here and Samaria is over here. Amen. So when G disciples were walking with Jesus, the Samaritans didn't want Jesus and the disciples in their village. They said, get them out of here. We don't want them here. And John's response says, Father or Jesus, should we call down fire upon their heads and burn them up? The hatred that they had towards these Samaritan people was evident before the transformation that happened in the book of Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit of God transformed every one of them. And now coming over here, Peter and John, they're fixing to lay hands on the very ones they call fire down on them. Now they're calling down the Holy Ghost upon them. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. I tell you, when someone is touched by the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God, there is evidence. What did Jesus say? Though you cannot see the Holy Spirit, you can see the evidence of the Holy Spirit's power in your life. Do you see the wind? You cannot see the wind. But when the wind moves through the trees, do you see the trees move? Same way with the Christian. Though you cannot visibly see the Spirit of God, you can see the evidence of the Spirit of God working on that new believer's life. Amen. And here is the evidence that something has happened to John and Peter. Amen. They're so excited to see the response that, that the love of God has extended beyond the borders of Jerusalem. Amen. And the gospel has broken out now beyond the borders of Jerusalem. Amen. Woo! Isn't that exciting? Yes. And there's an explosion happening. And here it is, Peter and John. I can just imagine how excited they were. They get to the church or they get to this revival that's taking place under this tent meeting. Amen? Can you imagine? All of them were saved. And, and, and what's amazing is that I want you to see something so important 
in God's word. Because if you really study and really ask and really dive in and really digest and really meditate, God will give you those deeper revelations. Because I asked God something. I said, God, why didn't Philip do it? He was there, right? Yeah. He was obviously filled with the Spirit of God. Yeah. He, he got every one of them saved. He was an evangelist. He was moving in healings and signs and miracles and, and the casting out of devils. And this was a great revival happening in Samaria. Amen? Amen? So why wasn't he able to lay hands on them and then receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Did you ever think about that? Amen. Let's keep reading. I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I'm getting excited. I get excited when I get into the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you get excited when you, yes. when you spend time in God's Word? Yes. It's good to spend time in God's Word. Amen? Amen. Verse 16. It says the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, had not yet come upon any of them. For they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. Then Peter and John, here it is, Peter and John, Apostle Peter and Apostle John, laid their hands upon these believers and they received the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Yes. This is a special ministry that was separated and given to Peter and John. Why? Because if you back up, if you were here last Wednesday, Simon, you remember Simon the sorcerer? Yes. He's in the revival and he got saved. He was this big name in Samaria. He was a magician and he was a sorcerer. And he, he dabbled in witchcraft. And he had a great following. Are you with me? So he was exalted among the people. And so God, in his infinite wisdom, said, I don't want this to happen to Philip. When they start going after man, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread out the services and the functions in a special way. So that they don't see one person as the all in all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, uh, Pastor Jesse's not preaching tonight, so I'm not going to church. <laughs> we we were in a church like that, and 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 the prophet he was I mean anointed of God, and I would help out at the services, and, and if his his wife or someone else was preaching, I'd see people come in the back and, and wanting to come into the service because I was an usher at the time. Yeah, I served I served too as usher, cleaned up too as well. I'd be in the back. I'd, I'd welcome in and welcome in the person. And, and, and I try to so, show them to the seat, and they look right away at the front. And I said, "What's going on, brother? What, what is, uh, is is Prophet so and so here? Oh no, no, he's he's not he's not feeling good today. He's not going to be here tonight. Oh no, no, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. And would leave. Wow. Just because I guess that was the only person anointed of God. <laughs> Do you know that God has set up this ministry? Here at the hand of God in such a way that everything has been divided. Ministry, ministry. Anointing, anointing. There's no one I, I want to go. I just want, why? Because we've taught you very well here at the hand of God Amen. that you are in love with Christ, the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Word of God. Amen. 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 Oh, I just can't wait to get to the hand of God ministry. Amen. Why? Because of the word of God. Amen. I don't want to hear my name in there. <laughs> Pastor Jesse, oh, he's such, oh my God. No, it's the word. It's the word. It's Amen. the word. Amen. For the arm of flesh will what? Fail. Fail you. And you may have had a bad experience being a part of a church in, in your past. But that experience may have come from man and not from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let every man be a liar, but God be true. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't stop serving God because of man. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. Hallelujah. And he's a loving God. Yes. And he'll never fail you. You can trust this word. And you can stand on the word of God. To deliver you out of any situation. Amen. And you can rest in the promises of God. I've done it and it works. Amen. 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 I want you to go somewhere with me really quick. Because I want you to see what's happening here already with the church of God. Because they haven't gotten organized yet. 
What's going on is a bunch of evangelists right now, evangelism going, because they got to build the church up. Amen. So go with me to 1 Corinthians. I want you to see something in, in the Word of God. Y'all enjoying this time? Yes. Amen. Amen. What's Pastor Dalisa and Pastor Jesse's job? To equip the saints for service. Amen. Amen. Not to make you feel good, though Amen. sometimes it makes you feel good, but most of the time the gospel does not have that kind of effect on you. Making you feel good. Amen. <laughs> That's been my experience. Hallelujah. Sharper than any two-edged sword is what the Bible says. We're going to start in chapter 3. I want to start in verse... Verse 5, are you with me? Watch this, I want you to see this. This is just amazing right here. So now, here it is, we go a little further. And we're going to see what's happening already in the book of Acts. And what's happening in this ministry. In verse 5 it says, after all, who is Apollos? Who is Philip? Who is Paul? Who is Peter and John? We're only God's servants through whom you believed the good news. We're just the vessel that delivers the message. Amen? Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. You see, Philip received a special work. Amen? And that he went to go and do a special work, and now the apostles are coming to confirm that work. Let's keep reading. Watch this. I believe I planted the seed. Verse 6. I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it. But it was God who made it grow. Verse 7. It's not important who does the planting. Don't think of yourself more than you should, saints. Or who does the watering. <laughs> What's important is that God makes the seed grow. Verse 8, the one who plants, Brother Gino, the one who waters, Sister E, work together with the same purpose. And both will be rewarded for their own hard work. What did Jesus tell the disciples? You're reaping in a harvest that you didn't work for. Amen. So pray for the laborers to be sent out into the harvest because the Bible says the laborers are few but the harvest is ripe for the picking people are hurting and we need more laborers to rise up in the kingdom and to get out and be Phillips in the earth and start gathering the last of the harvest before Christ comes one plants you may not have the increase right there and then y'all gotta hear me now you may just be called to plant a little seed here and a little seed there. But be careful how you do the planting. Don't ruin it for the watering that comes Amen. after. Amen. Because you may just be the planter. Hey, I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you. And that the blood of Jesus will forgive all your sins. Though God has to give the increase. Are you with me? Yes. But you got to do some planting. you got to do some watering. You just can't receive all of the blessings and not do anything. You're going to grow stale in your Christianity and you're going to start to get to a place in your walk with God where you just come to church and leave out of here and go about your business. You're going to die, Saint. You have to do something, even if it's telling someone that Jesus loves you and I'm praying for you. Amen? Amen. How easy is that? I had an aunt. And this was before I saved, and I thought she was just weird. And she was just one of those religious fanatics. Amen? I love it when you call me that. That means I'm doing something, right? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to be named among them out there. I want to look strange. I want to look different Amen. to the world. Hallelujah. Amen. We got too many Christians walking around looking just like the world. Amen. And acting like the world. Okay, maybe looking is, you know. But acting like the world should not be even named among Christians. Amen. When you hear the word Christian, people shouldn't run. Amen. <laughs> they should want to get to know you and your God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One plants. 
Jesus loves you. God loves you so much. And I'm praying for you. God has a miracle for you. God has a miracle for you. Pastor, God has a miracle for you. <laughs> he says he has a miracle for you. Everything that's been happening around you. He says nothing is done in vain. He says, all things work together for them who love me, who are called, called according to my purpose. And the Lord said, it's done. In Amen. Jesus' name. That was prophecy. That wasn't planted. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Now here comes the watering. Do you want to receive Christ into your heart? Woo! Why? Because the planter working together. Just because someone else goes to another church doesn't mean we're not working together. Hallelujah. So long as the foundation is right, we can build off of that. Don't get caught up with doctrines and trying to debate different types of beliefs. I don't believe in baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't believe in tithes. Of Stay away from all that. This is where your storehouse is. You believe what's in the storehouse that God has brought you to. Amen. 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 And you go out and everyone that names the name of Jesus, you can build from that chief cornerstone yes. and that foundation, yes. which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So you don't have to be some theologian and have gone to Bible college like Pastor Delisa and I and gotten your doctorals. You just simply have to tell them about Jesus, amen? <laughs> and tell them that Jesus loves you. I planted the seed and now I'm on my way. Don't be disappointed if God doesn't give the increase. That's not your business. <laughs> Come on now, right? Amen. <laughs> I'm not doing it no more. No, I can't get no results on that. That's not your business, saints. Some of that we go through in the beginning of our Christianity, right? But you got to cast out the, the line and make it a nibble every once in a while. Hallelujah. But cast your line out and say, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to forgive you. The blood of Christ. And it comes the water. It comes the water. Oh, God says, Bro brother, that you're ready. Your heart's ready. Your heart's ready. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you ready to receive Christ into your heart? Amen. And that person says yes. Because the planter did a good job. Amen. And now we can come in water as the same. The two work together. And what happens when you're working for the kingdom? Let's read again. Verse 6. Let's go to... Uh, it says here in verse... Let's go to verse 8. It says, The one who plants, the one who waters, they work together with the same purpose. The only purpose is what? To get them saved. Amen. And both, look at this, both will be what? Rewarded for their own hard work. Not only is there blessings involved, but the scripture clearly tells us it's hard. Amen. <laughs> Did you see that word in there? And in the last days, the Bible says that men will be lovers of themselves. Love will grow cold in the earth. As darkness begins to increase, as the borders of hell begin to expand, so the men and the women of God will shine brighter and brighter. Amen. And Amen. the anointing that's going to come upon His people is going to increase. Yes. Woo. Woo. increase. And increase. Amen. There's something happening in our nation right now. Yes. The other day we were on uh, Daystar. We just happened to turn it on because it wasn't uh, it wasn't announced on all the newscasts that it was happening. There was a Baptist preacher up there, and it said up there something that had an American flag, and he was up there introducing Donald Trump. I said, That's cool. in a Baptist church. Kennedy Center. Thank you, sweetie. I don't, I'm not too familiar with all politics and everything, but I can get you into the Word of God. Amen. We're not called to get involved in all the politics. We just pray Amen. for our president. We pray for those who are in authority over us. Amen? Amen. My thing is, is that Donald Trump sitting in that atmosphere and hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ, because this pastor, he preached a dynamite message about being saved. And he even prayed the sinner's prayer afterwards. I said, what is going on here with our nation? And I felt a freedom I hadn't felt before. And I felt something coming alive in me. I said, Lord, you're restoring the foundation Amen. of Christianity back Amen. in America. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know that this is a Christian nation? Yes. Amen. Go back and do some history. I love history. 
If you go back and do the history of our our, our forefathers, or, you know, the first presidents, they were all Christians. Amen. 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 This nation was founded on the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do you think the enemy attacks us so much? So here it is. The gospel has broken out. And the gospel is reaching to the ends of the earth now. And God is using Philip to do it. A man may ju be just like anyone in here. You never know who's sitting in your ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Here is Philip. Was in that upper room with the apostles. And they received the spirit baptism. And they laid hands on those seven that were deacons in the church. And Philip is sent out by the Spirit of God to evangelize the world. Is there a Philip in the house? Yes. You never know. Amen. All you got to do is be in a place where the Spirit is being poured out. Hallelujah. And God may do something with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Come on now. Go back with me to the book of Acts. I, 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 y'all getting excited now. Amen. I can, I can feel y'all's spirit coming alive. <laughs> We're going to read a few more scriptures and we're going to close it down here. I want to read verse 17 again. And we're going to go to one more place and we're going to close it down. Are you with me in the book of Acts? Amen. Don't worry, we're going to get to Simon. We're not going to even touch Simon yet because something's going to start happening in Simon's spirit. That he sees the apostles laying hands and then getting baptized. He's fixing to offer them money. He wants to buy the gift. But I don't want to get into that just yet. In verse 17 it says, Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to go with me to one more place, and we're going to shut it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is where the body of Christ is. In this particular ministry. I cannot speak on other ministries, but this ministry is going forth because the Bible says, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against Amen. it. Amen. Amen. This is the pillar of truth. Any church that's established by God always represents the pillar of truth. Amen? Let's read verse 4. Are you with me? It says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. Amen. Close your Bible. I never want you to get to a place, Saint, just because you're not doing much or it seems like you're not doing much. And we have Philip, who was an ordinary man who became extraordinary in the kingdom. You don't know the plans and purpose that God has for you as of right now. But the longer you sit where you need to sit, amen? amen. Like in that upper room. Philip probably, that was probably the last thing on his mind that he would be scattered and used for God in the kingdom to bring the gospel to Samaria. The hated Samaritans. And so you sitting here today. God has a call on every one of your lives. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. That means every one of us are called by God. But it's up to us to answer the call of God. Amen? Amen. To choose that call of God. By diving in with everything you have and giving yourself completely over to the kingdom of God and what He has for you. The rewards are so worth it. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Stand. Amen. 